Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and welcome to another video lecture from CSRDU. Those of you who don't know, I am Mohammad Noman, the team lead at CSRDU, and uh, currently I am a lecturer at FAST National University of Computer and Emerging Sciences, Sciences, Shower Campus. Uh, we are putting together a lecture series using this screencast system on uh, document preparation using LaTeX 2E. What we're planning on doing is first of all to introduce you to LaTeX, then talk about why we need to use it, or in other words, what's wrong with MS Word. We're going to talk a little bit about terminology, then we'll get st uh, started with installing the software, setting up the preferences, and then we'll move on to the document structure in LaTeX, how we set the document class, sections, subsections, formatting, all of that. We'll also cover the details of how you can import figures and tables in your documents, how to use packages, or what's with this undefined control sequence in LaTeX. That's one of the major problems that newbies faced when they move from something like Microsoft Office or OpenOffice, LibreOffice to something like LaTeX. Then we talk about how you can typeset mathematics or equations in general in your documents and we talk about how you can uh, create bibliographies, references and how not to have headaches while working with them. We'll cover them uh, in a little bit of detail. Uh, we'll also cover some of the advanced topics such as setting up algorithms, float environments in your uh, documents and how you can format codes, programs, policies, different types of outputs uh, from your implementations into your documents. Finally, we'll also talk very briefly about some of the uh, two, in fact, of the must-see documents that you need to see if you want to learn LaTeX. So that's the plan. First of all, let's start with the introduction to LaTeX. Very briefly, it's based on the tech type system, typesetting system which was created by Donald Knuth, or Knuth, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it's basically kind of a programming language that lets you typeset your documents and then it has a compiler that produces the uh, high quality output in different formats. The word is pronounced LaTeX. It's the sound of chai in Latin or che in Arabic. Uh, if you don't know how to pronounce that, you can call it LaTeX. Some people call it LaTeX, but that would be really wrong because it's not LaTeX, the rubber. It's at best LaTeX. Anyway, it takes in the LaTeX source and generates a number of outputs, any number of um, any type of output from DVI, um, HTML, RTF, PDF, PostScript. We're going to be working with PDF because that's the uh, de facto standard nowadays. But you can create all of the other formats as well. The output is concerned with placing different kinds of boxes around the page. The page is going to be the major entity in your document, and there are going to be boxes placed around all of the uh, real state of the page. For example, each letter is going to be a box and those letters are going to be combined together and another box will be created out of that which is going to be the word and those words are going to be placed together to create paragraphs and paragraphs are going to be placed together in different combinations to create the whole page. So that's the general idea. You need to keep that in mind because it's going to be very helpful when you actually do the uh, production, final production. Boxes are combined to form other boxes and they are placed using fixed or elastic widths and distances. So elastic is very important, that's the default and it helps you figure out where your document, what your document is going to look like, where the different boxes are going to go. More about uh, why we don't want to use MS Word. The major problem with MS Word is the lack of control. You might think that it's easier to control Word, but when you are uh, creating complex documents such as a research paper, which is, let's say, two-column format, and you have some figures floating around, and you have some policies, and you have some algorithms, it's very difficult to actually manage how the different content uh, flows together, and it becomes very difficult to control. It's, it's a big mess in general. 
you have to focus on content and presentation at the same time you have to think about what you're uh, trying to say as well as how it's going to appear and that's not a good idea in general that's why you have HTML separated from CSS and all of those things in general you want to keep content separate from presentation so that when you're talking about when you're thinking about content you can think about what you want to say instead of having to worry about how it's going to look like uh, what it's going to look like uh, in the final document so that's something that's wrong with MS Word you have to think about both of these, those things at the same time it requires too much effort to format for specific conferences or journals and once you have uh, a document in a specific conference uh, format if you want to shift to another conference format or to a general format it becomes extremely difficult and requires too much effort um, it's difficult to manage versions of course you have uh, tracking and all kinds of different uh, tools available with Microsoft but uh, in general it's much more difficult to manage versions with MS Word whereas uh, with LaTeX since the source code is text based you can use all of the uh, different version control systems like subversion, git, cds, all of those to not, on, uh, not only uh, manage revisions yourself but also uh, create collaborations with your co-authors it's also very difficult to manage references in MS Word. Even if you have EndNote, it becomes very difficult to uh, keep track of your references and create different types of uh, format, uh, bibliography formats with that. It becomes a little easier with EndNote, but in as you'll see in LaTeX, it's much, much easier and it's much more powerful. Uh, what's wrong with LaTeX? There has to be something wrong. The very first thing is you need to learn how to use it. Uh, it's not point and click, it's not WYSIWYG, so you have to know what the commands are, but as you'll see, that is very easy and uh, very easily learned. <coughs> so that's not that big of a deal. It's not completely in intuitive for some people. Once you get to know it, it's much more easier and you um, would probably come to like it so much that you would find it much more uh, counterintuitive to use MS Word. Uh, I've uh, found myself thinking that it would have been much easier had I written my letters in uh, latex so it depends on how much you use latex but if you continue using it it becomes much much easier for you especially in the long run so that was the uh, basic introduction of why i want to uh, learn uh, latex and one of the uh, things that i've uh, that i haven't really focused here is the quality of output produced ms word was not meant for high quality output it's a word processing software it's meant for writing letters and small documents it's not uh, a typesetting system so it does not produce high quality output whereas latex was meant to be uh, uh, targeting uh, print media so the documents that you produce here the research paper especially they are going to look extremely uh, beautiful uh, when you produce the final output and you try to take a printout or send it to a journal the output final output is extremely uh, beautiful so coming back to uh, the technical stuff uh, in terminology we have some very basic stuff the document is the output that's uh, fairly obvious the document class is the main type defining the document for example a document class can be an article if you're writing an article it can be a book if your document is going to be uh, a book so you can have different types of document classes and different people define their own document classes for example the IEEE has uh, defined their own uh, document class for their transaction journals ACM has its own uh, special interest group uh, class file uh, which you can use to typeset ACM format, ACM proceeding format uh, documents. So those are the things that you uh, basically use to define what your document is going to be. Uh, a package is basically a file encapsulating commands for a specific purpose. Uh, a common example is the graphics package which basically uh, helps you uh, embed different types of uh, graphics in your document or you can have a package uh, for the URLs uh, which lets you typeset different types of uh, World Wide Web URLs in your documents and all of those uh, different things that we we'll see uh, when we get to the practicals. .style files are the style files which are basically combined to create packages and uh, they are what define the new commands in LaTeX. We'll see examples of that in a minute. We have the CLS documents, which are the document class files. So all the document class files are represented with the CLS uh, extensions. You have uh, in the several uh, common implementations of LaTeX, you have a file name database. Um, LaTeX is a very low level mechanism. So it basically maintains a 
a list of all the files that it knows about the packages style files all of those things and sometimes you need to update them it's not very common so you don't have to worry about it but that's something you should know that there is a doc a, a file hierarchy in uh, latex that it maintains and sometimes you have to update it we'll come to that if we find a problem with that um, some of the must-see documents a not so short introduction to latex it's as the name implies it's a not so short introduction but it's extremely uh, help, uh, helpful if you can go through that document you don't need my videos it's it's very uh, uh, it's very uh, helpful and it, uh, it's very uh, interesting read so you can go through that but it's very long and it takes uh, quite a lot of time and you have to extract whatever is important for you what we're going to be covering in this video in these videos the set of videos is uh, going to be the core of what you need to do to write uh, research papers the other uh, document is the latex comprehensive symbol list when you are trying to create uh, different types of documents sometimes you need to create new symbols uh, again, we'll see examples of that. Um, but if you're trying to find uh, new and interesting symbols, you might want to look at this uh, document. So both of those, if you search for these strings on the internet, you can find them quite easily. And uh, I urge you to go and find these documents, download them, go through them. Um, so getting to the practical part, to work with LaTeX, you need, uh, first of all, an editor which is going to be your IDE, Integrated Development Environment, in which you are going to create the document. It can be Technic Center for Windows, Kyle on Linux, WinEDT, LED are uh, platform independent. You can run them on Windows or Linux. I prefer Technic Center on Windows and Kyle on Linux. The, uh, Kyle is extremely powerful, but it's not available on Windows, so we use Technic Center in Windows. You are also going to need a compiler, which is basically going to take whatever you write, the document that you write in the editor, and compile it. Uh, on Windows we have MicTech, extremely powerful uh, LaTeX editor. On Linux we have TechLive, TechTech. Uh, TechTech was the old one. Now you have TechLive, TechLive. So those are the things. In Windows we are going to use MicTech. So uh, we're going to start with that in our demo. Uh, so let's get started with the installation first of all. Uh, that's the first thing we're going to do because we need to have the software to get started. So what you're going to do is, first of all, get these two softwares. The MicTech setup you can get from MicTech.org. The current version is MicTech 2.9. You can go over here and download the basic MicTech 2.9 installer. And you can click on download and uh, you'll get it. You are also going to need the Technic Center, which you can get from TechnicCenter.org. You click on download and uh, just scroll down to Technic Center 1 RC1 installer. You can download both of these. We've downloaded both of these here. Um, if you're on the, uh, if you have access to the fast lecture server, you can get these from uh, my folder in on the lecture server. If not, you can just download them off the internet. And basically, what you want to do is first of all start the MIC Tech setup. That's because the Technic Center setup is going to require a compiler. It's going to require a compiler when you want to set it up. The setup is fairly easy. You accept the agreement, click on next. You just keep on clicking next and at the end you click on start and it will start the installation. So once the setup is done, what you want to do is start the Technic Center installation. This is also very easy. What you want to do is click on next, accept the agreement, and basically install it wherever. It doesn't matter. Once the setup is done, click on finish, and you want to start the newly installed software. On the first install, you are going to have to do a little bit of uh, configuration for this Technic Center. So 
you will get a tip you can either read the tip or just click on close this is the configuration that you have to do you need to tell it where the compiler is and our compiler is available in C colon program files MIGTEC 2.9 that's the default location and within that you need to find the MIGTEC folder and give it the bin folder because that is where the tech distribution binaries or executables are um, present so you give it the C colon program files MIGTEC 2.9 MIGTEC slash bin uh, directory and click on next it also needs a postscript viewer so if you don't have a postscript viewer it's fine but if you have the acrobat professional installed uh, it will already pick it up okay uh, you also have to show it a pdf viewer so you can uh, just download the acrobat uh, reader to act as the, your uh, pdf viewer and if it's installed it's going to pick it up on automatically if not you can uh, click on browse and browse to whatever the location is and give it the executable that can show you the PDFs click on next and just take a look at these different profiles and finish you don't have to do anything with them as such so after that we are going to do just a little bit of configuration for this uh, MIGTEC editor what we want is to enable first of all the spelling checking so you go to tools go to options and in the spellings tab you want to enable check spelling while typing okay, and click on ok it's going to basically give you a warning that the personal dictionary is not available so you can click on ok and it will create that personal dictionary for you what that's going to do is allow you to have the word style spelling checking uh, real time spelling checking in which if you make a spelling mistake it underlines it in a squiggly red line so that's very helpful another thing that I'm going to do to make the screenshot uh, the screencast easier is change the text format for the editor from 10 point format 10 point uh, font to a 12 point font so that it's easier for you to read okay? but you don't have to do that so that's it for now next time we are going to create our first data document, inshallah. See you then.